Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody. Today we're going to be going over the rifles of Fallout New Vegas. There is quite a lot of rifles in New Vegas and the rifles are generally a pretty good option to take with most builds, assuming you're running a guns build and you're not taking something like energy weapons or anything else unless of course you're doing a hybrid build. They are available at all times during the game which is awesome for some of these, especially if you know where to get some of the more unique ones. Let's begin our list with talking about the absolute weakest <laughs> rifle that we have. This is the BB gun. And the BB gun is made to be a toy. It's not really meant to be a weapon. This doesn't require any guns and it only requires one strength. So any character built however you'd like will be able to use the BB gun effectively, which thank goodness. It does very low damage per shot. It has an average crit modifier, low crit damage, okay action point cost it's not the most accurate although it's not terrible on accuracy either it holds 100 rounds in it which is pretty nice and it is also one of the most lightweight weapons it also is a lever action gun so it is affected by the cowboy perk which doesn't really help it because having four base damage and getting 25 percent more it's still a 25% bonus, but you go up to 5 damage, so still very, very low. Basically, you're only ever going to be using the BB gun to either mess around with or just to shoot early game things like rad roaches, and that's kind of its only purpose. It, I guess it is silent too, which is kind of nice, but yeah. The BB gun is absolutely D tier. It's one of the weakest weapons in Fallout and just not a great weapon overall for actual serious use. It is a fun weapon to mess around with, though. Our next weapon, on the other hand, is kind of different than that. That is the unique BB gun. This is the Abilene Kid LE BB gun. This one has the same exact stats as the regular BB gun, with two exceptions. One is that it has a slightly higher crit chance at 1.5 times, which is nice. And second is its crit damage. It has 70 base crit damage, which is very high. That can be doubled if you hit a sneak crit. It can also be increased with better crits or with the professional perk, I believe. This is still silent. This one actually is pretty good so long as you're going with a luck based build. If you have a low luck build, this one's still not going to be fantastic. You can, of course, get the sneak crits, so on a sneak build it'll be fine too. You can find this one just north of New Vegas in a shack. I think I'm going to put this one up into B tier. I think this is actually a pretty fun weapon to be using. You are relying on crits. BBs can be a little bit hard to find or just to buy from people. So it's not like one of the most crazy weapons, but it is a surprisingly strong weapon. Our next weapon is the Varmint Rifle. The Varmint Rifle is probably the first gun that you're actually going to get to use in New Vegas, assuming you talk to Sun. This is a 5.56 rifle, which is very good because the 5.56 bullet is very, very versatile. You get a lot of options for it. It requires zero guns and only three strength to wield. This has okay damage per shot, at least early on it has pretty okay damage. DPS is pretty low because it is a bolt action. Crit damage and crit modifier aren't really anything to talk about. Same with action point cost. It is extremely accurate, like all the bolt action rifles. So you can hit things from quite a ways away, and it doesn't weigh too much. It does have three modifications that you can throw on it too, which do increase its uh, viability quite a bit. You have a suppressor on it, an extended magazine, taking it from five rounds to eight rounds. That's pretty good. And the biggest one is a night vision scope. That one is probably the best one that you want to get early on, at least if you can. It's pretty easy to find varmint rifles early on, so you can fix it up all the time. And I'm going to put this one into C tier, with it being pretty good in the early game, but definitely falling off towards the later game. Our next weapon is the unique varmint rifle this is the rat slayer you do get this in brock flower cave which can be kind of a difficult area to go in early on but it's definitely worth going and getting this one also requires zero guns and only three strength to wield this has decent damage per shot decent damage per second it has an insanely high crit modifier at five times so it is going to be hitting crits like crazy and it has extremely low base spread it also has all the modifications on the standard varmint rifle as well as having bonus health and also being slightly less weight which is interesting a very very good early Early game rifle. It does fall off pretty hard towards the later parts of the game though once other 5.56 weapons become introduced, but early on it is a very solid weapon and I would say in the early game, depending on when you get it, it's probably A tier because it is probably your best sniper rifle up to that point. I'm assuming you're not a little bit uh, higher leveled like you did some side quests, maybe you did some exploring and found a hunting rifle or something. But I'm going to put this one on the high end of B tier. I think that it's really good. It's also really fun just to take around later on into the game because the 5.56 bullet will just carry it with all the variants you can have. You can load this thing with armor piercing rounds or hollow point rounds and take out just about anything. So, and on a, like a crit build, uh, it is very strong. If you want to go with better crits or if you want to go with the professional, great options there. Our next rifle is the Cowboy Repeater. This one requires 25 guns and 4 strength. You can find these pretty early on too. This takes the 357 round, which is another good round. 
It has kind of awkward sights. I don't really like its sights very much, but hip firing it feels pretty good. It does good damage per shot. It does uh, good damage per second as well. It has a slightly above average crit modifier, interestingly enough, at 1.25 times um, and decent crit damage along with that. It has very little spread, um, lever actions and the bolt actions. Basically, any of the manual action guns tend to have really low spread, so they are extremely accurate. This one can be modified a couple different ways. You can put an extended tube, taking it from 7 rounds to 11 rounds. You can put on a different stock to it where it drops its weight by one and a half. And you can also have a custom action giving it an even higher rate of fire. This one is, of course, affected by the cowboy perk since it is a lever action gun, which is a very good perk to get early on for a weapon like this. It's also great if you want to take this weapon to like old world blues because finding the 357 rounds are pretty easy. And cowboy repeater is actually all around a fairly solid weapon. I'm going to put it like in the middle of B tier. I think it's pretty good. Even later game, it's still not that bad. Then we have the unique version of it, which is Le Long Carbine. This one has the extended tube on it as well as it has a different reload animation. You actually reload all the rounds all at once with this, so it is faster to reload, assuming you're not just reloading one or two rounds to the cowboy repeater. It has a scope on it, which the scope is pretty nice. It has a slightly faster rate of fire than the cowboy repeater, or at least baseline. I don't think it is once it has the custom action on it. And a slightly higher crit modifier at 1.5 times. That's pretty nice. Fairly low action point cost, good spread just like all the lever actions, and slightly more health than the regular cowboy repeater. To get this rifle, you need to steal it off of Corporal Sterling, which can be kind of a pain. Usually you can steal his ammo and then steal it from him after you leave. He is at Camp McCarran, or he can be at Camp Forlorn Hope, depending on what point you are in the game. You could also reverse pickpocket him and give him a better weapon so that he puts this in his inventory, and then you can steal it. It is really difficult to get this away from him, and honestly, it's not really that much better, if at all better, than the cowboy repeater. For all intents and purposes, the scope is pretty nice. The fast reload is kind of nice too, but the cowboy repeater is pretty solid as it is. And this isn't a huge upgrade, especially if you have all of the mods onto your cowboy repeater, then I think they're about equal and I'm going to put it right up there with the cowboy repeater. I think they're both pretty good weapons. It just depends on what you want for them. Our next rifle is a service rifle and you can get this one fairly early on too. This is another 5.56 rifle, which is great because of the ammunition that it has. Only requires 25 guns and two strength. So you're going to probably be able to use this with just about any class. It does okay damage per shot. Good DPS though. You can shoot this pretty fast. Other than that, the rest of its stats besides its action points are pretty standard. Action points are low, so this is pretty good on a VATS build. Its spread is about the same as the BB gun, a little bit worse than it, so it's not the most accurate, but it, it's not terrible by any means. You can get like the grunt perk and get more damage with this one too, which is great because the grunt perk you can also get fairly early on. And service rifles aren't incredibly hard to find. You can get one guaranteed by running down to the Mojave, uh, Outpost. I keep calling it the 188, but I think it's the Mojave Outpost down south. The service rifle does have two mods on it, uh, or can have two mods on it. It has an increased receiver, which increases its uh, overall health, so it takes longer to break. And it can have upgraded springs, which increases its rate of fire, which is also pretty nice. Overall, I've never really been disappointed with the service rifle, but it does definitely fall out of favor later on into the game um, when you have other weapons that also take the 556. So I think the service rifle is actually a pretty solid low B tier maybe high C tier, somewhere around there. And then we have the unique variant of it. This is the survivalist rifle. This is not 5.56. This is actually uh, the 12.7 millimeter round. This requires 75 guns and four strength. So more guns, but not a substantial amount of strength. It has high damage, really high damage per second, low action point cost. So this works really well on a VATS build. It has very low spread for a semi-automatic rifle, which is interesting. It has offset sights, which I don't really like. I wish they were kind of pushed towards more of the middle or you could just, you know, knock off one of them. <laughs> I think that would kind of help with my aim for this one. The 12.7 millimeter round can be a little bit difficult to just find running around, although it's not entirely difficult to buy. It doesn't have a whole bunch of variants though either, where it's basically regular or it's hollow point rounds. You do have the jacketed hollow points if you have the hand loader perk, but those work fairly similar to the hollow point rounds overall. That being said though, this is better than most of the other 12.7 millimeter weapons because it does have high base damage and it's also pretty accurate. So it's probably the best 12.7 millimeter weapon in the game. And I would say that this one's probably our first S tier. It's somewhere I think on the lower end of S tier because it is a little bit limited by ammo, but you could just use hollow point rounds for anything that doesn't have armor and standard rounds for everything that does have armor. Our next rifle is the Trail Carbine. The Trail Carbine is another lever action rifle. It takes the 44 Magnum round. And this one, I actually really like. This one's probably my favorite of the lever actions, at least normal lever action guns. 
because it has the nicest sights out of any of them. The other ones kind of have the weird uh, aperture sight that I don't really care for, like the cowboy repeater and the brush gun, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This one has just the standard like V-notch sights, which I like a whole lot more. This one requires 75 guns to wield and five strength. This has good damage per shot. It has good damage per second. It is extremely accurate. It's okay for action point cost. It does have one mod where you can put a scope on it, which the scope is fine. I don't mind it, but I don't mind the iron sights for it either. These ones are a little bit more rare to find. You can buy them from the gun runners and you can buy them from a couple other vendors. You can get one early on if you go north of Good Springs. There is a raider that has one of these, but you're going to have to kill him to take it and those raiders are particularly tough as well as you have to get through the cazadors around there too so might be a little bit difficult but the trail carbine is a pretty strong mid-game weapon and kind of holds its own throughout the game so i'm gonna put this into a tier i think it's actually pretty good once again this is affected by the cowboy perk which is nice oh i should have mentioned that the survivalist rifle is also affected by the grunt perk which makes it even stronger since it is also counted as a service rifle up next we got the hunting rifle and I think this is the regular hunting rifle. They both look almost the same in these pictures, so you're just gonna have to trust me that this is the normal hunting rifle. This one requires 50 guns and six strength to wield. This is a 308 bolt action rifle. It does good damage per shot, kind of low damage per second because it is a bolt action. It has a good crit modifier at two times with having good crit damage as well. It's one of the most accurate guns in the entire game, having extremely low spread, so it is very easy to hit enemies at basically any distance with this. This one can have three mods. It can have a better bolt, which increases its rate of fire, which is awesome for this weapon. You can have an extended magazine, taking it from five rounds to 10 rounds in the gun, which is kind of nice but I don't think entirely necessary and you can have a scope on it which is really really good it's a really nice quality of life option for the hunting rifle and once you have the hunting rifle decked out it is pretty solid the 308 round is very similar to the 556 where it is extremely versatile you can take regular rounds with this the jacketed soft points from hand loader hollow points armor piercing anything all of them are pretty good with this weapon so I'm gonna put the hunting rifle up into A tier I think it's really good then we have the unique version of it this is Pacinetta I think that's how you say it. I'm not entirely sure. I, I know it's uh, Spanish, but I know it means patience. This one you can buy in Novak. It also requires 50 guns and six strength. This one also does high damage per shot, decent damage per second because it does have a faster rate of fire than the standard hunting rifle. It only holds three rounds in it, which is a little bit odd rather than the five rounds. This one also has a unique feature of when you look down sights, it actually zooms in for you similar to a scope. I'm not sure what the exact magnification is, but it is a zoom for you, which is kind of nice. This still has a two times crit modifier, which is really great. And this actually has a 110 crit damage on it, which is pretty crazy. Once again, this is extremely accurate, just like the regular hunting rifle. And this one is also really good. I'm going to put this one at the very top end of A tier. I like this one a lot. I wish it could have a scope. If it could have a scope, I would put it S tier. I think it's really good. But I could also see people saying that this is S tier and one of their favorite guns or just the regular hunting rifle. It is actually really fun and really powerful in this game unlike some of the other Fallout games for some reason. Next up, we have the Battle Rifle. You can just buy this one from various traders. They might have it. Gunrunners tend to have it. Enemies can't have this one, though, unless you drop it and they pick it up or something. This is a 308 semi-automatic rifle modeled after an M1, which is always awesome. It does have the ping, which is great. Its sights are not really the best. It has good damage per shot, high damage per second, and extremely fast reload. It's not the most accurate out of the rifles though. It also comes in at a weird weight at nine and a half. It would really be better if this was 10. That way at least you could get some value from like the heavyweight perk, cut this thing in half, but whatever it's fine it still gets bonuses from grunt which is awesome so it does have good damage and it being a 308 gun it kind of fits any role which is really nice this weapon i would say is probably on the low end of a tier it's a solid all-around weapon there's nothing really to complain about with it it's just good then we have the unique version of it which is this machine this is actually in the base game this isn't part of the gunrunner's arsenal like the uh battle rifle is you can get this one from doing an unmarked quest with Contreras. This is in Camp McCarran. This quest is kind of buggy, which is uh, a pain sometimes if you want to do Contreras' part and still have him as a vendor. It's far easier if you just rat him out and then you get it that way. This requires 75 guns and six strength, just like the battle rifle did. It has good damage, good damage per second, a fast reload. It still has the ping on it, which is awesome. Low action point cost, which is awesome. And it's slightly more accurate than the battle rifle, which isn't saying much. Mostly where this thing really shines is its amount of item health. This thing has a crazy amount of health where it takes forever to break this thing. And if you're okay with the sights and okay with hip firing this thing, it's actually incredibly solid. It can carry you throughout the entire game because the 308 rounds are so versatile. This one I am also going to put up into S tier. I actually think I'm going to put it above the survivalist rifle, even though the survivalist rifle is also really good. This one is just more versatile than it and has more health. 
This one, I think, has more burst damage than it. Next up is the Marksman Carbine. This one requires 100 guns for you to wield effectively and 4 strength. It has the ACOG sight on it, which has a short range reticle, which is pretty nice. It has good damage per shot, really high damage per second, decent crit damage, really good for a VATS build because its action point costs are really low. It has extremely low spread too, it is extremely accurate. And it also has a fast reload. Since it takes the 556, it's also incredibly versatile. You can get a couple of these up at the boomer's place pretty early on, which is really crazy. So overall, this this weapon's great. I would put this one high up into A tier. Uh, honestly, all of these are pretty comparable up in A tier, so I'm just going to toss it there. Then we have the All-American, which this one is even more crazy than the Marksman Carbine, which is already really good. This one also requires 100 guns and 4 strength. This one has better damage, better damage per second, a larger magazine by 4, and it has even lower action point cost, making it insane on a VATS build. It is absolutely crazy. The sight on it is also really nice. This one is a little bit difficult to get, though, as you have to go into one of the vaults. You have to get it into Vault 34 and get all the way to the bottom of it, which is infested with a lot of ghouls, and they are pretty tough but it is totally worth it for this gun because this gun is one of the craziest guns in the game. And I would put this one also high up into S tier, um, somewhere around here. Honestly, it's hard to compare these weapons to. They're all really solid. All American is a fantastic choice and definitely, I would say the best option for a 5.56 gun overall for doing just about every job. Up next, we have the Assault Carbine. This one is a bit of an interesting one because this is our only weapon that shoots the 5mm round which generally does low damage, but with armor piercing, it's actually really strong since it usually ignores almost all types of armor. That's pretty good. It has a high rate of fire. It does low damage per shot, but high damage per second. Its crits are terrible. You don't really want to be relying on them. Action point cost is okay. Spread is not that great. This is affected by the grunt perk though, I believe. Oh, same with the Marksman Carbine and All-American, which makes them even better too. This one does have pretty high health, but it can chew through that health pretty quickly just because you'll be firing a lot of rounds through it. Overall, I haven't really used the Assault Carbine that much throughout any of my New Vegas playthroughs. Usually I get it late game, and then I've always had fun with it, but I've never really used it as like my main weapon or anything. It's usually just been to spray at stuff because I've had a lot of 5mm laying around. I'm going to put it B tier. I think it's also good. I think it's similar to the service rifle. It's just you get this one far earlier on. This one you're probably going to get a bit later unless you run up to the gunner's place right away because I think that there's at least one of them in the place with the ants. Up next we have the automatic rifle. This is the BAR and this one can be found in Dead Money. This one's interesting. This one's a 308 weapon too, so it does have some advantages there since the 308 round is pretty useful. It has okay damage per shot, one of the lowest out of the 308 guns, but it does have really high damage per second because it is full auto. Its crit modifier is pretty bad. Action points is not that great. It has one of the most spreads out of any of the guns that we've talked about, so it's not super accurate. Its sights are a little bit weird and I think I think that they might be off a little bit in the game. This requires 100 guns and 8 strength to wield, so it is one of the heftier weapons to actually wield around, and it does weigh a lot, weighing 16. You can get one modification for this, which is uh, upgraded internal parts, which gives it 10% more rate of fire, which is pretty nice. This weapon is kind of weird though. I Usually I just find myself hip firing it and I don't even use it that much in the Sierra Madre. Usually I use it afterwards because 308 rounds aren't super plentiful there. If I have excess 308 rounds, I will use this, but it is probably the weakest 308. That being said, it is still a 308 gun, so I'm going to put it in B tier because it's still pretty good. Up next, we got kind of a weird one. This is the Bozer. Bozer is such a bizarre weapon. This is a light machine gun mixed with a sniper rifle that's firing the 556 round which is automatically pretty good because it is super versatile. This requires 100 guns and 8 strength, and you have to buy this one from the gunners, and it is very expensive. This has low damage per shot, pretty good damage per second. It has basically no crit chance whatsoever. It's very unlikely to hit crits. It is decent on action point cost, though, and it's okay on spread for a full auto gun, but still not one of the better ones. This one's just such an awkward one because it doesn't really fill the role of a sniper rifle very well. Basically everything else that we've talked about here that can be a sniper weapon will be better than it. And it doesn't really fit a light machine gun role either, which I think that's also better in some of these other weapons. I'm going to put it into C tier because I've never really used it that much. And whenever I have used it, I've kind of been disappointed with it. It's never been outstanding compared to some of the other weapons. It's never been terrible. Because again, 5.56 is pretty good. But I've never thought that I would want to use it over something like the Marksman's Rifle or the light machine gun, 
or something like All-American. All right, up next we got all the sniper rifles. First up, we have the regular sniper rifle. This one requires 75 guns and six strength. This one is a 308. It does good damage per shot. It has good damage per second. It is semi-auto. It has uh, two times crit chance, which is nice. It has good crit damage, good action point cost. It is very accurate. Overall, this one's really solid. There is two mods you can put on the regular sniper rifle too. A suppressor, which is pretty cool and carbon fiber parts, which reduce its weight by five. 308 round super versatile. This one is probably gonna be a good option no matter what point you get in in the game. So long as you have like weapon repair kits because the sniper rifles break really fast. Regular sniper rifle, I'm gonna put on the low end of A tier. I think it's pretty solid. Then we have the unique versions of them where we have the uh, Christina COS silencer rifle. This one has higher damage, higher DPS, higher crit chance at two and a half times, higher crit damage and it's also very accurate. It also has a little bit more health than the standard rifle does, which is good. And it also has a suppressor just built on at base. You'll find this one in Old World Blues um, outside of the concentration camp, the little gangsty. This one's a pretty solid weapon. I'd put it up into S tier. I think it's a little bit on the low end of S tier just because of the item health, but if you have weapon repair kits or jury rigging, that's not a huge deal. And you're probably not gonna be shooting these a whole ton because these are more like initiation weapons before a fight kind of kicks off. And then we have the Gobi Scout Rifle. This is the other unique sniper rifle. This one you can find in the Wasteland. This is above the Caesar Legion camp, the large one at Cottonwood Cove, I believe. And you need 100 lock picking in order to get this because it is in a chest nearby. This one does good damage per shot, really high damage per second, uh, really high crit damage, which is nice. It has a high crit multiplier too at two times. It has good action point costs. It's super accurate. It holds six rounds rather than five rounds, which is pretty cool too. And it only weighs four and a half. Uh, it also has much higher health than the standard um, sniper rifle. So this one is an easy S tier. This one is a really good weapon, uh, especially if you want to run and get it early on. Say you're going with uh, a lot of lock picking early on. Maybe you're going with comprehension as well. You can get lucky right at the Steve Bison Hotel and then basically run right over there and get the Gobi Scout rifle and just use those two weapons and they're really strong in combination. Our next weapon here is the light machine gun. This one requires 100 guns, eight strength. This is a 5.56 weapon as well. It has good damage per shot. It has really high damage per second. It has basically no crit damage and it's not super accurate like a lot of these full auto weapons. It has a large magazine of 90, which can actually be taken up even higher with its one modification going to 200 rounds if you wanna put the larger magazine on it. That is really fun. This is a super fun weapon to use. It's basically a weapon you're going to find late game though. You're not going to really find these early game or mid game. And they're only really good for spraying down smaller enemies. That being said, with the 5.56 round, they can do that actually pretty well. And I would say that this is better than the Bowser. So I'm going to throw this one into B tier. They're also really good for making money because super mutants tend to have these things and they are worth a lot of money. Our next weapon is the brush gun. The brush gun requires 100 guns and six strength overall. This is a 4570 rifle. So it does a lot of damage per shot, pretty good damage per second. It has high crit damage as well. It's also extremely accurate since it is a lever action gun. It only holds six rounds, so you can run through ammo with it a little bit quick and it's not the fastest to reload, but it's not terrible by any means. Since it is a lever action, it is affected by the cowboy perk, so you can get even more damage on it, which makes this thing pretty devastating. And it has one modifier on it, which is the forged receiver, giving it more health, which is kind of nice because this doesn't necessarily have the most amount of health. It has more than the unique version of it, which is a little bit odd. Brush gun, really solid, really heavy hitting. I'm going to put this one high up into A tier. I think it's another really good gun. Probably better than the trail carbine, at least for practical purposes, although I do like the sights on the trail carbine more. And once you kind of get into this damage range, they both do pretty well against most things. Our next weapon is the medicine stick. This is the unique version of the brush gun. You have to buy this one from the gun runners, which kind of sucks. I never like buying the unique weapons. This requires 100 guns and six strength. This does high damage, high damage per second, high crit damage. It's also extremely accurate and it holds eight rounds rather than six rounds like the standard brush gun. It also has way better sights than the regular brush gun. This has my favorite sights of any of the lever action guns on it. It also just looks really cool with the dream catcher on the back of it. It doesn't weigh very much. It doesn't have the most amount of health. It has more health than the base brush gun, but not as much as the brush gun can have if you have the mod to it. So it can break kind of quick, but if you have weapon repair kits or jury rigging, that's not a huge deal. This one is probably one of the strongest weapons in the game. So I'm gonna put this one high up into S tier as well. I think it's very good. And then for our final gun, we have the really big boy here. This is the anti-material rifle. 
which you can get the Gunrunner's version of this and then put mods on it, which is pretty awesome. This thing requires 100 guns and 8 strength to wield effectively, so quite a bit, like some of these other weapons we've talked about. It does really high damage per shot. Since it's a bolt action, it doesn't have super fast follow-up shots. It has high crit damage, it has very low spread, it's extremely accurate, it already has a scope on it, holds 8 rounds. It is very heavy at 20 weight, although you can take this down with a couple of perks, um, like heavy weight, which is kind of nice. And you can also take it down with its mods. The mods are a custom bolt to give it a faster rate of fire, which is pretty nice. A suppressor to reduce its sound, which is pretty good, I guess. And then the carbon fiber parts, which reduce it by 7 weight. The 50 cal rounds are pretty devastating by themselves. Even more so if you want to take some of the other 50 cal rounds that you can put in it. Mainly the explosive rounds, which just rip through just about everything. Armor piercing rounds are usually not needed with the 50 cal, but you could throw them in against heavy armor enemies. Incinerary rounds can also be pretty good, especially if you like fire and you wanted to take the pyromaniac perk, because they are affected by that. Same goes with uh, demolitions expert affecting the explosive rounds. And you could also make some match rounds just to have more damage and even more accuracy. Although it's probably not likely that you'll notice the accuracy difference. The 50 cal is pretty insane, and I'm gonna put this one also high up into S tier. It is very good. It's super fun to use as well. You throw explosive rounds into this and just blow apart anything that you see. You can also blow apart yourself though, so be careful with them because they do do friendly fire damage. There's a lot of really good rifles and a lot of pretty decent ones, especially for when you get them. Yeah, some of these might look a little bit strange here at the end, like the service rifle and the light machine gun being in the same tier. I'll, I would say the light machine gun is a lot better than it but you don't ever get this early on and you do get service rifles pretty early on. So tell me your thoughts on your favorite rifles in Fallout New Vegas. I would love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. And thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye everybody.